Hi there, I'm Dr. Amy. And I'm Dr. O. And we're going to talk today a little bit about the sympathetic stress response or what really causes stress in your animal. And we're pretty comfortable sitting here on the porch today, just relaxing, or at least we look like it. But we might be a little heightened stress because other things are going on in the background. Animals can do the same thing. That's correct, and we have to remember that because when we're stressed, and, and the body, the mind, really doesn't differentiate stress. Stress is stress. It doesn't matter if it's stress from work, stress from pain, or stress from being confined. And let's define stress a little bit, because when we talk about stress, we mean the actual chemical changes, hormone changes that go on in the brain and in the body and in the nerves that change not only behavior, but metabolism and the inner workings and functions of the whole system. This includes lungs, heart, GI tract, liver, kidneys, all the way to the bladder. And when we change those functions chemically, we get a big difference in how that animal is able to respond, react, and behave. That's correct. And what might be considered normal short-term response, for instance, increased blood sugar, decreased ability of the body's um, cells to use insulin, that's a normal stress response as seen in our chart here. But because that stress doesn't go away, that blood sugar stays up, that ability of insulin to work goes, stays down, now we have a horse that's diabetic. And sometimes we create those situations as owners, as trainers, as veterinarians, we try to put that animal in what we think is a safe situation based on our own lives. We like to be comfortable. We like to be protected by walls. We like to be enclosed where people can't get to us. But horses like to be able to see. Remember that their vision actually improves with distance. They are better at seeing movement in the distance than they are at seeing you standing still close up. That's correct. And so when we put them in a stall with no windows and only one door, they're required to remain on guard the whole time. Because the only way for them to see the lion and get away from the lion is if they catch him when he's way out there. Well, that's true. And they don't want to catch the lion. They want to run the other way really fast. That, that's correct. And that actually helps reduce their stress response because the motor function of running away, while it increases their heart rate and increases their lung capacity momentarily, they can actually run about a quarter of a mile without breathing at all so that they can then turn around and look back and see what was there. But that actual motor function dampens that stress response, that chemical change that goes on in the nerve roots and in the spine and the brain. What we know is that stress can turn into depression and depression in terms of neural function fires on the same tracks in the brain as pain. And the other thing we need to remember is not only do, can we get depression, but when we're stressed, it excites the nerve pathways. And when those nerve pathways are turned on, it's easier to get them even hyper excited. So little things that normally don't bother our horse, now all of a sudden become very annoying to him. You're right, Dr. O, and you know what? Once those sensory pathways are heightened just a little bit, 
the heart rate beats a little faster more easily the lungs breathe a little faster more easily the bladder gets a little fuller more quickly and so all of these responses that are normal to the body for getting away now become chronic it happens more often that that action potential or the ability for it to happen happens quicker and we get fatigue because we get into that excitatory response too easily and can't sustain it but the other thing that it does is it changes our acid base balance because when we breathe more quickly our horses exhale more carbon dioxide which is actually a buffering agent to the system and when our heart races more then our kidneys filter more blood and so as they filter out more of the electrolytes that buffer our system in the horse our horse becomes more acidic and it's not just his GI tract no it's not but one of the things about the GI tract is we've shunted the blood away from his GI tract the body normally does that he shuns his blood away from the GI tract so to make more blood more oxygen more energy available to the muscles so that he can run away so this has a tendency to shut down or slow down digestion short term that's a good thing but long term we'll end up with a horse that hasn't eaten or hasn't drank or can't or can't or won't in two or three days reminded of that story uh, of when we were out and saw those horses um, in the racehorse barn uh, at is at the cowboy challenge extreme cowboy challenge they were all in stalls and of course in a race track backside we probably don't want horses that are communicating with each other across stalls so all of the stalls were solid sided and had one open door those horses were all in a strange place they couldn't see anybody else except for by looking out their front door so as far as they knew they were trapped in a cave and if somebody was going to come and attack them they could only come in and out that one door so when we walked down the aisleway every horse had their head hanging out the door so that they could catch the lion and make their attempt to get out of the cave before the lion got close but this made it so that they couldn't they didn't have time to eat or drink because they were watching the lion the horse that we had gone to look at had been having trouble with the crowd noise and the music noise at the cowboy race not something that normally this horse experienced but when he was in this situation where his sensory information was heightened just a little bit when you put him in an excitable state like that it's heightened even more so he was unable to perform because he was responding so overtly to everything that was going on and if this go goes on for too much longer we can actually end up with chronic illness and disease we can end up with diabetes we can end up with COPD we can end up with even laminitis because the change in the pH of the system changes how tissue responds so don't forget that sometimes when those horses don't look all that stressed because they're hanging their head out their door maybe they really are stressed and we can take this into account when we trailer our horse because how many trailers look like a cave how many stalls look like a cave and if we give the, our horses an out and it doesn't need to be a huge window because the horse really doesn't have to be able to get out that second th um, window or that second door that we put in there he just has to think he can get out so when we're harmonizing our horse's health we want to keep in mind what stresses them versus what stresses us and make their environment stress as stress-free as possible